SpaceX plans to have two orbital towers down at Starbase in Texas for the launches of their Starship vehicle. Super heavy vehicle, about 400 feet tall. The most powerful rocket in existence right now. Now, right now, SpaceX can launch Starships about five times per year, but they don't really want to do that. They want to have a lot more launches than five per year because they need to test the rocket for the upcoming Artemis missions and also for Starlink missions in the future and also some other cargo missions to the moon and beyond. So what do they do? Let's take a look real quick at this. Uh, this is from Ars Technica. This is Eric Berger. Eric is awesome. Uh, SpaceX seeks a waiver to launch Starship at least nine times this year. Uh, last year, they did. Uh, we're at two right now, two Starship launches altogether. So if they could squeak out nine launches, uh, it's been it's months between every single launch between IFT one, IFT two, and now IFT three. It's been a few months, but if they could do three, uh, you know, uh, three within this time frame, like right now, IFT one, IFT two, and if IFT three could be in March of this year, uh, they'd have. April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So they'd have that many months. Could they get that many launches in that many months? One launch per month, about. Um, I don't know. That's a that's a pretty risky bet to take. Nine launches in about as many months. Could they do a turnaround of one launch per month? Could they build enough boosters fast enough? Could they have enough Raptor engines for one launch per month. Do they have enough ships for one launch per month? At this point, they don't have as many built as there are months left in the year. So um, there's a possibility that they can get this done. They're going to have to ramp up production, ramp up launches, but I believe they could do this. So let's get into a little bit of the minutia here. Um, SpaceX nears its uh, first Starship launch in 2024, possibly as soon as within three weeks. So sometime in March. You know, they're going to be doing this launch from Starbase during a press uh, availability this week. The Administration of Commercial Space Transportation at the FAA, Kevin Coleman, said the agency is working with the company to try to facilitate the Starship launch licensing process. This is huge if this actually happens. So looking at a pretty aggressive launch schedule this year, he said, they're looking at, I believe, at least nine launches this year. That's a lot of launches. Uh, if you're doing modifications and doing them one by one, that's a lot of work. Could SpaceX be hiring a bunch more people too? Uh, we're going to see in the near future if they're going to be hiring more people. We know there's going to be another orbital pad there, too. So they're going to be launching these things and also building a pad, possibly. Let's take a look at that in a little bit, too. Um, we've been talking to SpaceX constantly around the clock, coming together and trying to figure out how we do this. We're invested with the company, so we'll work with them to get them back going as soon as possible. So basically saying we're going to get them flying again so they can continue building and fly more rockets in the future. Um, SpaceX decided to launch and attempt to land a Starship vehicle in Texas about five years ago. The company had to undergo an environmental re uh, review of the site. So I want to ask you this question, too, and I want to know what you think down in the comments. Um, so SpaceX is going to launch IFT3 soon. And it's going to be sometime in March, probably, according to Elon Musk. And if the FAA is working with them, and it, it seems like they are, could they possibly launch a rocket in March and then another one in April? Are they really, are they that close? Um, I don't think they're going to be able to do a turnaround that quick. So in my opinion, it's going to be late April, more than likely May that they get another rocket off. If this one goes as perfect as it should go, IFT2 or IFT3, if it goes better than IFT2, uh, then it seems like they'll have all the systems in place to get an IFT4, IFT5, etc faster than what they've done before. So all the regulatory hurdles that are in place right now could kind of be relaxed a little bit. And then the FAA would work with SpaceX to get nine launches for this year, which would be incredible. So that's my question. Do you think they could pull it off nine months with nine launches? They have about nine months left uh, to get nine launches. And so we'll see, we'll see. But I don't think they're going to be able to do nine launches. I think that's a very optimistic goal for SpaceX. And I'm not trying to be pessimistic here. I'm just saying these things are gigantic. They're hard. Things happen all the time. Like the booster right now was moved back to the high bay so it could get some work done on it before the IFT3 launch. And the uh, the ship is on the suborbital pad right now just hanging out. 
So maybe there's going to be some work uh, done on the uh, on the booster and on the ship in the near future. So if that needs to happen, the timelines can slip pretty quickly. Now, that being said, uh, suborbital pad B could be becoming orbital pad B. SpaceX has always wanted two, count them two, 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 launch towers at Starbase, Texas. That was their vision from the beginning. Two launch towers so they could do everything they need to do from Starbase. Don't have to worry about Kennedy Space Center for a while. They can do everything from Starbase until they start launching humans on these things or start launching these things from NASA property at Kennedy Space Center, possibly for the first Artemis mission. It seems like a good PR stunt to get them launched from NASA. But if they need to, they can do these uh, launches from Texas because it's already built out. No reason to go to Kennedy Space Center and waste resources there uh, before the launches. Just keep building up Texas and keep getting it to a better place. So this is suborbital pad B um, is now going to be orbital pad B. B. And that's according to Vixie, Vicky Cox 15 on Twitter or X, if you will. Um, and SpaceX reiterated the permit application on 12 February 2024 with modified project plans requesting to fill a 0.16 acre wetland to construct a second orbital launch pad, which will replace the current suborbital launch pad and test stand. So currently it's just a test stand, right? It's just it's just right here. That's it. There's really not much there, but it could be a orbital launch pad, which would be fantastic because if they're going to refuel Starship, they have to send up uh, possibly anywhere between 10 and 20 tankers for Starship to refuel before it gets to the moon and needs to refuel them. It's a complex thing. It's a very complex thing. Could SpaceX do it with two pads? Better than one pad. Two pads are better than one. So this is the other question that I want to ask you. Orbital pad A, orbital pad B at Starbase. Do you think they're going to catch the booster? Or do you think they're going to be expendable for the NASA missions? Do you think they're going to have boosters ready to go? They're going to have 10 to 20 boosters ready to go and expend them in the Gulf of Mexico? Or do you think they're going to get the landings nailed before the Artemis program? Because if they don't get the landings nailed... Uh, you know, what are they going to do? do they, will they have 15 boosters just ready to go? I don't think that's the case. I think what's going to happen is they're going to be able to catch these things before the um, Artemis program, Artemis three. So which pad, this is the question, which orbital pad do you think they're going to catch on first? I'm going orbital pad B because there will be modifications, upgrades to it. They need to catch it. So if if they need to catch into one tower, I think it's going to be orbital pad B because orbital pad A, it's going to be the workhorse. I think they're going to launch from there. That's perfectly fine. They launch from there right now. They're going to also launch from orbital pad B. But if they can launch from orbital pad B, uh, they can land at orbital pad B, orbital pad A. Also, they can land at orbital pad B. Maybe they can catch them at both. I want to know your opinion down in the comments below. Let me know what you think where they're going to catch the first booster, orbital pad A or orbital pad B. So we got a couple questions here today, um, but that's that's pretty much it. I want to show you the the uh, the plan here. Um, space exploration technologies uh, published February 22nd project plans, um, you know, go into deeper here, go a little bit deeper and you can zoom in if we need to 150 uh, percent wetland subject to this request. So we have tank farm, orbital pad, et cetera here. And then we have um, down here, we have a little zoomed in, a uh, requested additional wetland impact 0.16 acres, this little red, this little red one right here, proposed wetland impact. It's not much, it's really not much, uh, but will they be able to do this? And there's a, a ground shot of a wetland impact uh, update summary. So there's the pad, you can see it there. It's right, right next to it. It's literally like, you can take a couple steps across this, take five or six steps and you're across this whole thing. Um, the Army Corps of Engineers, will they allow this? There might be a little impact, an environmental impact study here, but I think they're going to be okay with it. It's an industrial zone right now, basically. If you look at it, it's an industrial zone in the middle of all sorts of things going on. You know, there's a parking lot, there's 
Um, there's a bunch of concrete, there's pipes, there's tubes, all sorts of stuff going on here. It's wetlands. Of course, we have to protect the wetlands, but also we have to go forward with progress. So what do you think? Uh, what do you think about this too? I, I think orbital pad B will be the catch tower to begin with. Then they're going to take them off orbital pad B, refurbish it, take it back to the high bay. And while that's happening, other rockets are going to come out and then they're going to launch more over and over and over. So that's where we're at right now. It's going to be a wild 2024. If they get this proposal, um, if they want it, if they get this uh, orbital pad B uh, proposal accepted, we might see orbital pad B become a thing, start becoming a thing in the next few months. After IFT3, I think they're going to start moving in hardware if this gets uh, approved really quick. So we're going to see. But see, the other thing is, I want to show you this. Uh, Public state expiration date, January, March 2020 or 25 of 2024, January, March. So next month, about a month actually from today, we're going to see uh, the expiration date of this. So uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. But thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate your time and uh, take care of yourselves and each other. And I will see you in the next one.